Hi. Okay. This is a good. Uh, this is a good one. It's the question I got. Um, the title is going to be, I think, smoking weed makes semen retention more difficult. And this question is from Zen Love. He says, I'd love to hear about weed from you. I'm smoking four or five years every day. A couple joints every day. And I'm 20. Now, when I meditate on weed, it raises me so much. But before I do meditation, sometimes I feel that my body can't relax. It's like my face keeps like projecting something in small muscles. Usually when I'm with people. But then when I go home and I sit in the dark, I love sitting in the dark. Then finally I can truly relax. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let me uh, let me just tell you a little like. <clears throat> look, I smoked weed from about twelve to fifteen, all the time. Uh, so we're similar, but we just started. I started a little, a little earlier than you, and I mentioned in the previous video, it made me. It was really good at first. You see, it made me. Um, it's like it maxed out all my personality traits in my because see I had I was on all these hardcore pharmaceutical drugs before that like I've shared and it just made me down and drowsy and no life force nothing and then I quit all that because I got old enough to where I could tell the doctor and my parents to go to hell basically and so I stopped that but the problem was still there this nervous system disorder and so I needed something else. So I found my own medicine, and it was weed. And man, I went from, I went from just being down and getting pushed around by kids to I was full on. My humor, my all my personality traits were just peaking. You know, uh, my confidence. It's like I didn't have any confidence <laughs> when I was on these psychotropic drugs, and you know. Uh, ticking and twisting and having just trouble and then kids making fun of me and it just sucked and then I smoked weed boy watch out you know I remember <laughs> it was such a huge contrast between uh, before and then after when I started smoking weed I mean I wouldn't even think of talking to a girl before that because I just I didn't have any I didn't have any power any charisma any confidence nothing and then I smoked weed and I, I remember, <coughs> this is a long time ago, but I remember, I told my friends, man, I'd give them the phone book, I'd say, open it up, pick any person you want, any girl in there, I'll call her and make it happen. And I, I, I would call her, and we would, uh, she'd talk a little bit, <laughs> you know, but that's where I was at. Oh, and then I used to go to the skating rink during those days, and I would see sometimes the people from school who would mess with me. Man, I would, I would be dying to get into a fight, you know? I wanted to show them who they're really dealing with, you know? This guy that they knew before, that's not me. This is me, you know? I'll throw down with anybody. This is, this is, this is, uh, <laughs> this was the state that weed gave me. You see, it didn't make me relaxed. It, you'd think I was on cocaine when I did it. It affected my chemistry different. But whatever, I liked it at the time. The problem is that, uh, stopped working and I felt like it felt like I remember <coughs> I, t <coughs> I told my um, my friend we were both high I said man I feel like I'm in a I'm in a rerun of an old movie this, this is how I expressed it. it 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 felt like I'm here like something new I was here but I was way off somewhere you know like like trying to get back to here and um and I felt like I was losing my mind. I really did. Because I would try to quit for a little bit and that wouldn't go away. And so I, this was God, you know. I found um, a rehab. I didn't know anything about rehabs or anything like that. And I told my mom, I said, you need to send me here. <laughs> because I'm, I'm in trouble, you know. And uh, I just had, I don't know why I picked the rehab. I just, I just. So there was some intuitive belief that this would help me. 
and I went to the rehab and it did. I got, I got clean, but man, the withdrawals were terrible. People don't understand some people getting off weed, you can have really hardcore withdrawal. And that's why a lot of people don't stop. Um, there's some that don't, I'm one of them that did. And, um, I just, I, every time I closed my eyes, it was all these zigzags and weird shit. And I couldn't sleep for like a month. I mean, I had, no, more like a year. <laughs> I had insomnia really bad. That stuff took, took a while to get out of my system, you know? Uh, and I had a hell of a time, but it introduced me when I, <coughs> when I was in the rehab, it introduced me to 12 step programs and meetings they had Narcotics Anonymous at the time. Now they have also Marijuana Anonymous. I'd have definitely went to that if they would have had that. But nevertheless, when I went there, man, I felt at home. I remember I was telling the doctor in the rehab, I said, uh, I felt so bad, like so long. And I'm like, you know, Doc, will I ever feel better? And he gives this this robotic, uh, you know, formal reply. He said, like, you know, I can't say for certain but I, um, I believe you will, or, so, or you know, like, like you don't want to be sued or something. You know, everybody's so paranoid nowadays in these uh, organizations. You, you can't just talk to somebody like a real person, you know. That's why I like living in Ecuador and other developing countries. The relationship I have, like with my dentist and my doctor, I can just call them on the phone. I mean, we chat sometimes on WhatsApp at midnight talking about my, my dental situation, you know. And his wife asks him, like, who are you talking to? <laughs> He's like, no, nah, it's okay, it's work. But my point is, in America, there's so many formalities and nonsense, and, and it's just the uh, medical people do not understand if you have, like, addiction or chronic pain or whatever, or anything, really. Uh, damn it, I just want to say this before I forget. You know, I, I wish a doctor, any doctor, it would be, qualified if you're gonna if you're gonna for example chronic pain doctors they know nothing about chronic pain because they don't have it it should be a requirement that they have it you see and then then let's see how much better the um, the relationship with the patient would be and let's see if you would give out the same advice you give now or with mental issues or anything you know it should be a prerequisite they should have it before you're gonna start giving advice or um, or addiction also, you know, that was the, the, the beauty or, or all these pharmaceutical drugs that they just administer like like it's nothing, you know, uh, you should take it like it should be a requirement that they actually take this pill, this synthetic pill that they're calling medicine. Yeah, take it and see if you still feel it's medicine. It may be necessary to take, but are you going to call it a real medicine? Especially after you've, if you've ever experienced real natural uh, medicine, like from the Amazon or the Himalayas, that's medicine. But yeah, they, they should experience Haldol and Rasperdal and these psychotropic drugs and tranquilizers. Like, take that a little bit and then see. See, uh, then you can answer your questions that the patient has better, you know, and uh, see if you'd even recommend it. Anyway, that won't happen, but... I didn't forget where I left off. Um, when I, so I was saying, the doctor really didn't understand me at all. And, um, and couldn't satisfy my questions or give me any hope. You know, I needed hope. So when I went to this first NA meeting in uh, Charter Springs was the name of the rehab. It was in Florida. Man, I felt just, I was like, whoa, I'm home. I was like glad that I got strung out on this shit just so I could go to this meeting and have this camaraderie with others who uh, understand like this mind function, this addict nature and, and all that. And I'm not saying you're an addict, by the way. Um, but anyway, this is a big subject. There's a lot of angles. And so I'm allowing myself to branch off and talk about uh, many things, you know. So I went to the, the NA meeting and then I found somebody. I really liked him. I went every day. I just liked him. It's like I could find some friends here and some camaraderie. So I finally found who I call a sponsor, like six months later, uh, who is kind of a guide that helps you through the, the steps and somebody you can call if you felt like getting high. And they have programs, by the way, for everything, sex addiction and chronic pain. And 12-step has really blew up. And it's just a great fellowship, and I recommend it to anybody who's having trouble 
um, getting rid of an addiction that they, they seem like they don't have the power on their own to do. I mean, why not utilize this, this fellowship, you know? I finally found somebody. I was at a meeting. I heard him talk. And I said, I need to talk to this guy. And I remember I asked him the same question that I asked the medical doctor when I was in the rehab because I still felt bad. That's my point. I felt bad for <laughs> a couple years after I quit smoking weed before I finally got back into some semblance of a, a balance, you know. It's a, it's a hardcore drug for some people, you know. Not everybody has this, uh, this effect, but I did. So I asked him, I went up to him after the meeting, I said, man. I just feel real bad (laughs) and he started laughing and I knew I knew in that laugh I I, I started smiling too because he conveyed to me he knew exactly where I was at and then his reply and I remember this is this is over 30 years ago but I remember he said he said he said bro you're supposed to feel bad man you're 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 a dope addict that's that that's getting off of uh you're, you're quitting drugs you're not doing you're not doing your drugs. You're, you're supposed to feel bad. That's all I wanted to hear. That's all I needed to hear. He says, you'll feel better, but you got to give this some time, you know. Anyway, I wanted to tell that story. Um, so back to the thing. It was maxing my personality traits. I felt like I found the best thing in the world. And then it stopped working. And then when I would go out, it would just be, I would just be paranoid. I was insecure all the time. My vision was just weird. And, um, you know, I, when I, when I, even when I stopped, I had the same problems that I had when, uh, it's not like, see, it's like, why are we doing it? So you gotta, you gotta ask this question. Why are we doing any of this stuff? Any, any habit that we want to quit, but yet we're still doing it. Why did we pick it up? You see? So when we stop doing something, that stuff is still there. That's why uh, a lot of people who quit smoking or quit nicotine, they become, they're already like a dormant sex addict, but then they become even more of a, a, a compulsive masturbator or watching porn. Why? Because it's like this neurotic energy that the, the nicotine or the weed was doing for you. Now it's not there. Now you don't have that crutch. So now you're going to go into something else, you know? And it's like that. Habits are like that unless we go to the core. And this is the, the gritty inner work that nobody wants to do. We just want to take a pill or take some treatment or uh, operation and have it all go away. So when, when I finally got clean, I had the, I had the same problems, you know. Um, and so that's what really, and, and they're, not, <laughs> they're not small problems. Like I had a malfunction in my nervous system and in my mental body and emotional body. And my chemistry was all weird. And that's why I just pretty much devoted and dedicated my life to trying to get balanced. I mean, forget about family and career and climbing the corporate ladder. It's like I need, I need to get this body balanced. Otherwise, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it, you know, because I can't handle it. <clears throat> so it's like... <clears throat> I want to. I want to. I want to talk how though it applies to. Um, I ended up getting better, by the way. Obviously, <laughs> I couldn't make these videos in the past if my life depended on it. Um, but I don't want to get too far off in uh, so many different directions when the video is about how does how does marijuana or weed affect semen retention. So it took me uh, almost 14 minutes, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed the previous stuff. I think it's relevant. How does it affect semen retention? You see, I work with people. I work with people. It's not ironic. A lot of people that are trying to uh, preserve their sexual energy or they're trying to stop the masturbation and porn habit, they're smoking weed. And um, what weed does in relation to people trying to uh, preserve their semen, it's like it makes the mind dull. Okay, now I'm going to get into the the so-called creative benefits in a a little bit, but it's a duality. Okay, okay, let's say it gives creative benefits, but it also makes the mind muddy. It makes it dull. And um, so any habit we have or any vice that we're trying to get rid of, if we're smoking weed, it's not going to help. It like diminishes our willpower from my experience and from the people I've worked with. If that doesn't isn't true for you. Okay, good. You know, it's. um, 
I'm not declaring any absolutes anytime I talk. <clears throat> but I have to give my experience. And it's like I don't have the power to... to I, don't, I, I lose power. I lose mental horsepower. I, I, I lose clarity. And so I can't stop something, especially as, as powerful as the, the sexual instinct, when it, when it reaches some uh, negative perversion habit. Because it's very entrenched at that point when we're using porn, masturbation, sexual fantasy, and lust, and edging, and trying to get attention from girls. When it reaches that point uh, where you're very obsessive compulsive about this stuff, th this is a pretty deep habit. And to transcend that, where I'm going to need inner power. I feel weed blocks that. Okay? That's the thing. Uh, it's, it's like it gives a pseudo relaxation in the nervous system. You see, a lot of people, they don't, they don't sense this. And maybe some, it's not true at all. It's cool. But I'm telling you for a lot of people, because some people, when I would say this, they would think about it and it was... And they would, something would admit, like, yeah, this, this actually is true. I haven't thought of that. And what I'm saying is, it's like, it's like when we smoke weed or or any THC, really, oil, edibles, it, it, it gives a pseudo counterfeit relaxation, but underneath that, I found there's an edginess. You see, so it's not a holistic relaxation. This is what we need. We need, we need a, 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 a holistic uh, medicine. <laughs> and that's why I talk about lifestyle and diet and, and uh, you know, all these positive habits that we can do in our life in a spiritual practice that should be underpinned with anything we do because that will give, that like unlocks inner power that we wouldn't normally know we have, you see. This other stuff, like weed, it gives some... It gives a little, it's like we get, it throws us some, you know, relaxation, counterfeit, and then it goes away afterwards. And then it leaves us with a stronger compulsion to get, um, to indulge in that habit again next time. Because we want to, again, capture this, this counterfeit relaxation. And the problem is it stops working as time goes on, as we know. The tolerance uh, for weed starts to go up. And then um, we need more, and then it produces less of a so-called beneficial effect, but yet the compulsion to do it's still there, and it's just a bad situation to be in. <clears throat> so um, let's see your question, though. Um, uh, I just I just want to also say the creative. It's like the creative. This is the big thing people uh, talk about the creativity that weed gives them yeah it does what a lot of the pharmaceutical drugs do it opens some channels and then blocks others it's like it has to block others to open up the certain channels you see that this is the problem so if for example let's say I'm a painter and <sighs> I get high and oh wow wow I'm really deep now I'm like painting some really spiritual whatever and then somebody comes in hey Yash what's happening you know it's like I lose my full spectrum consciousness it's like I'm I'm like zoned out on this but I lose <laughs> you know I don't have it's not a holistic uh, uh, medicinal effect or like if you, usually the creative people, you know, they're creative when they're alone or if they're with other people who are getting high, but then yet go outside into normal public and, and carry on with the, let's say a certain situation came up that you had to tend to, you're not going to feel like doing that. Whereas if you're grounded in inner power, you can do whatever you're doing, your creativity, enjoy. And then if you got to take care of something, there's energy and clarity to do that also. This is what we got to get to. But we got to burn out on these bad habits first to see that they don't work so that then we can let go of them. It's like a necessary thing, you know. Uh, and this is why suffering comes in. It's, it's handy. <laughs> Pain, they say, is the, the touchstone of all spiritual principles because it can 
It can bring the motivation out of us to transcend something when nothing else can. It's not enough just to intellectually have a good idea uh, to think transcending something or letting go of something's a good idea. We, it's just there's not enough power. We need with our whole being to want to let go of this thing. And then, and then grace or some inner power comes to support that. But how do you get that? This is a process, you know, this is an evolutionary thing. Talking to like-minded people who are through, already through that stage, watching videos, reading books, help accelerate this uh, consciousness in you, you know. Uh, but I did want to say about the edibles and the oils. You see, I went back and tried. I, I hadn't smoked weed or touched weed for over 20 years, but I had this problem with my neck. And so I wanted to... And that's when oils be, were becoming more uh, popular, more accepted, and now, like the doc, it was becoming legal in certain states, and the people, a lot of people were were proponents of this, and so I'm like, sure, why not? Let me let me see if it can help, because I never tried the oil. I didn't want to smoke it. I knew that that's not good. Technically, the oil is better than smoking it. Technically. But if it's not your medicine, like it's not my medicine, it's just not going to matter. Um, so I, it's just not going to be good. <laughs> so I tried the oil, super high grade oil, and uh, also the edibles. Same thing. It gives this kind of edgy, neurotic reaction to my nervous system. It gives, it gives, a, it gives a, a, a seeming relaxation. But then underneath that, things are, things are like, you know, it just doesn't feel good. So that's my experience with the oil. Actually, even CBD, to be honest with you, CBD also does that to me. It's like the marijuana plant doesn't agree with me. San Pedro, ayahuasca, even psilocybin mushrooms, I'll put that ahead of marijuana any day. I mean, if, now that I can give a more general statement and say that I, I feel that could apply to anybody actually because we're talking about heavyweight medicines San Pedro ayahuasca mushrooms that these are like next level medicines it's like comparing um, Jesus or Buddha like do you want to talk to them or do you want to talk to your average local community uh, yoga teacher you know who's conducting the class like it's some aerobic uh, class or uh, you know, I feel it's kind of like that, the, the difference between the heavyweight plant medicines that I described and, and marijuana. But you're, you're saying, oh yeah, the, the, the face, uh, yeah, when you get those twitches in your face, yeah, you said, um, my body can't relax. My face feels like it's projecting something in these small muscles. I know exactly what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying. That's withdrawal. That's what I feel. Um, when I'm, yeah. It, I mean, it's more than withdrawal also. It's, um, the nervous system's not balanced there's an edginess and the edginess is manifesting in these uh, symptoms that you're describing when your face is, you know, you, you just, something's just weird and it's like twitching. I know, I know what you're saying. Um, again, more reason to be free of this, any addictions, you know, marijuana, semen retention. Well, semen retention is a good addiction, but to be free of these things that are causing damage to the nervous system. It's like these things, they, at first, they present this wonderful seeming, like, you know, promise. Like, you know, they're like, I'm going to balance you and give you, uh, you know, calmness, whereas before you were uh, um, neurotic. And then when we do it, it's like, oh, yeah, this is relaxing. The same with masturbation and, and porn, whatever. It's a checkout. And, and we get out of our self-absorbed, you know, compulsive thoughts that are causing us a lot of emotional pain. This is how addictions are born. But the problem is, um, you know, what the problem is. They stop working after a while. 
So you got to get more balanced, more balanced inside, and then, and then these things are going to die down. These symptoms, you're gonna, you're gonna be, energy is going to be flowing more um, systemically. You see, it's not going to be locked in certain places, and the nervous system's trying to, you know, it's, it's this body's a full on, it's a full spectrum organism. When something's blocked somewhere, then it affects other things, and. Uh, but I feel here it's really your nervous system is just too it's too edgy it's not relaxed it needs to be more grounded and then these things will go away and then you say you'd like to come home and sit in the dark yeah man I love the dark I try to shut everything down in the evening after I eat dinner like as soon as it gets dark I try to shut everything down with the YouTube and you know, everything except like really important uh, messages or some emergency or something. Because this is, this is the time to really balance our energies, to really let, when we sit quiet, we're not thinking about a bunch of stuff, you know, what do I got to do or engaged. Some people are engaged from the time they get up till they go to sleep, you know, until they lay down. And then and their dreams are also engaged because the whole momentum... There's no time to like just chill. You got to chill, you know? And so if we can do that as a practice every night, just after you eat, just do whatever you need to do during the day after you eat, switch off. Yes, yeah, that's what you do. And, um, and what happens is you'll, you're going to start to, these habits, this is the first stage, the habits and, and neuroticness, this stuff is, is going to start to come up. And, and, and you're going to be like, this is uncomfortable. And then the mind's going to want to engage in some activity because you, you can't bear it. So you work with it as best you can. But this stuff has to come up. There's an analogy about an ink bottle. Like you take a black ink bottle, dirty ink bottle, and you keep pouring water in it. And then you see the color. First it's black, but then it starts to get more thin. And at some point it's just pure water. It can take a while though. But like, when are we going to do this? This is inevitable. We have to do this work. It's not just going to go away on its own. And even if we die, we're going to have to still do the work on another plane or we're going to have to get a body and come back and transcend, transcend this because this is what our deeper self wants to do. It just wants to do it. There's an inkling in you and a, a feeling to want to be free of, of whatever that's keeping you fettered. So that's proof. Like, this is our highest goal and main goal. Not to go, you know, achieve some worldly success and all that. That doesn't mean anything if this uh, transcendence hasn't um, become actual in your life. This is the main thing, you know. So yeah, sit in the dark. Do that every night. As this stuff starts to come up and get, get released, then you'll start to feel a real sense of calmness. See, this is real sense. This isn't coming from a pill or a plant or weed. This is, uh, this is coming from your own deeper, you can say, wa deeper waters inside that's calm. You go to the bottom of the ocean, it's very calm there. On the surface, there's all these ripples, right? We got to dive deep into our own core. How do you do that? By taking the time and sitting in the dark. <laughs> the dark is great. I love it. I... Uh, I go out, usually I take a walk at night. I buy dog food. I don't have any pets, but I have a, the dog food, and I walk to not exactly where I am right now because I can't see, but near, near the woods where there's a river and it's really quiet and no people are, are there because it's dark. And then as I'm walking there, I'm feeding the dogs, whatever stray dogs I see. It's fun. Then I get to the river and I'm just, I just sit here like this in the dark, you know. It's a great thing. And then I come home and I sit in the dark at home. <laughs> when I can. Sometimes I get tied up into stuff and, you know. So I think we covered a lot. And uh, I think somebody's coming also. So I just wanted to touch on that. And uh, let me know if that helped you. And uh, keep leaving me questions. I'm gonna, The next video is going to be on... Um, I think premature ejaculation because that's a big deal and um, I can tell you semen retention will cure that better than any pill okay have a good day